Good evening and welcome to Creative Conversations. I'm your host, as you know, Matthew Arkin. And as promised, tonight we have with us my very good friend, George Wendt, who uh, you know from movies such as Fletch, Guilty by Suspicion with Robert De Niro, Broadway. Uh, he was in Art, Hairspray, Elf, and Breakfast at Tiffany's. And he was in the musical version of the wonderful horror movie, Reanimator. And on television, you know him from MASH and Saturday Night Live. So please welcome my friend, George Went. Hey, good Hi. evening. <laughs> Hi. Did I forget anything? I didn't forget anything in the credits. I covered yeah. everything. Yeah, well, you know. I, yeah. We don't need to talk about that horrible show. Oh, no. Don't dare talk about Cheers. Well, no, we talk about everything else. Everybody right. knows everything they need to know about Cheers. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, fresh as a daisy, <laughs> as usual, as always. Well, that's how I know you, fresh as yeah, a daisy. Yeah, yeah. Beating me up, chasing me around, hitting yeah. me with a baseball bat. I know. <laughs> Being your loving husband. My loving husband. Yeah, I was going to say we have something in common. Um, one of the wonderful things that we have in common is uh, that we've both played women in plays. Yeah. And and y I, you played my husband when I played a woman. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get to play your – I auditioned to play your husband. Wow. In Hair Spray. Mm. I don't know if you remember. We I, I came to see the show when I was auditioning for it, and we went out to dinner afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember. Um, they didn't but, offer uh, you? Or you they, turned it down? <laughs> I said I'm not good enough for him, for her. <laughs> you know, weirdly, I uh, uh, so I played Edna a lot. You know, yeah, and between Broadway and a couple other productions up in Canada, and um, um, then I got this. Uh, they were doing it. The Baltimore Symphony was doing a concert version. Uh, narrated by John Waters himself. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, they offered me the role of Wilbur opposite Paul Vogt, uh, who's hilarious, who uh, played Edna. Right. So, um, you know, we have like these duets and, uh, you know, I kept singing Edna's lines and Vogt would look at me like, the fuck what are the you? Hell? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's my hard when you've played one part and then you have to play another. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I made my Broadway debut, it was in Laughter on the 23rd Floor, and I had understudied three roles. And then I finally went on in the third one that I'd learned. And I spent, I was so terrified going on the first time. And I felt all night long like I was just hearing cues. So I spent the entire evening going, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm uh, stopping myself. It's I love hard. that show. Uh, uh, by the way, I you know it. I saw it. It, it really was an eye opener because I you know I'd heard about Nathan Lane this and Nathan Lane that, and I I wasn't familiar, you know. So uh, all of a sudden, uh, I go see this show, and uh, holy cow! Yeah, he tore it up. He yeah. was unbelievable. He did, and it was uh, doing that with him. I only did it with him the one night, and it was being like strapped to the front of a Japanese bullet train, naked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just yeah. a, a really terrifying but wonderful experience. Good. And and he was incredibly generous. He made a curtain speech for me afterwards at the end wow. of the show, saying that it was my debut, and he was incredibly generous and lovely. Um, so. So I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. He's okay in my book. <laughs> um, so um, we, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have a little uh, competition later in the show. Yeah. To see, well, just uh, not a competition. We, you don't, you don't have to do anything. But we're gonna, we're gonna take votes on which one of us is the is the is the better woman. Okay. <laughs> I have photographs of both of us as as women. Yeah. so um but um you know i'd love to know or i do know but maybe people listening would like to know 
a little bit about your your origin story. And I, I like to go way back even before your your first foray into showbiz, but I like to find out from people, you know, how old they were when they first started thinking about doing this crazy thing and and what their thoughts about it were at, at that time. Like what brought you into this at a at a young age? Wow, it's a long story, but uh, uh, we got an hour to kill. We got plenty of time. <laughs> Uh, um, I uh, so I was utterly clueless as a young man, um, you know, flunked out of college, and you know I had no idea, no interests other than partying, and no, uh, you know, like I, my dad kept saying, "What, you know, what, what's your goal in life? You have to have a." And finally, after being browbeaten for like a year uh, with this, what's my goal thing? I, I said, my goal is to someday have a goal in life. And uh, anyway, um, so I, I managed to graduate from college, a different one after uh, I got kicked out. <laughs> and um, and uh, now I'm at home and... Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You can't just sit here and, and, uh, man. So I, I was talking to this friend of mine and, uh, I said, what, uh, what do you, you know, I have no idea what I want to do. None, no idea. Uh, and they're like hectoring me here at the house. And oh, he says, Oh, I know what you do. Uh, I said, well, what, what, what? He said, you go to Europe. I'm like, you can just do that? He goes, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Icelandic Airlines, 165 bucks from New York to Luxembourg City. And, uh, you know, it's round trip. And, um, you know, get a backpack and uh, take it from there. <laughs> so I did. And uh, I spent the better part of two years uh, – just wandering around uh, Europe uh, and North Africa because it was warmer and, right. and the hash was more available. And, um, uh, you know, and uh, during that time, I thought, man, I got to come up with something to do. So I, I sat there and, and just, I'd use the process of elimination. I, I didn't want to do something that I would hate. So I thought, okay, what wouldn't I hate? Hmm, sales, no, I'd hate that. Fireman, no, I hate that. You know, doctor, out of the question. Teacher, I'd hate that. Um, you know, lawyer, I'd hate that. Yeah, yeah, pretty much everything I could think of that was a possible occupation, I hated. I, or I suspected I would hate it. And then I thought, you know, I'd gone to see Second City when I was in college. And uh, I thought, wow, you know, if I could do that somehow, I'll bet I wouldn't hate it. And and I was pretty sure they got paid, you know, because it just looked like a bunch of, you know, uh, younger-ish men and women uh, goofing off on stage. And uh, so... I, I don't know where the hell I was on a mountaintop in Switzerland, let's say. Anyway, uh, I eventually, my money ran out. And, you know, by mo we took a long time for my money to run out because I was living on the side of the road, you know, nicking lemons off of trees and living on hashish and lemons. And, you know, it was, uh, it, it was, uh, the money lasted a long time. So I get home and I call up the box office at Second City. They love that. And I inquired about the workshops. And uh, they said, all right, send us your address. Give me your address. I'll send you a flyer. 13 weeks, 85 bucks with Josephine Forsberg, uh, uh, you know, workshops once a week. So I went and uh, she was amazing just a great teacher and uh, gave me all sorts of positive feedback from the get-go. And I was 
green as could possibly be. And really, all I wanted to do was be in Second City. And now, at this point, I had no notion of a career in entertainment or, you know, any of this being an actor. That wasn't even part of the picture, let alone, you know, winding up on, you know, a, a, a classic sitcom, dare I say. Um, so, uh, you know, it's the first time I ever applied myself at anything, anything at all. And uh, after about a year, Josephine says, in the workshops, she says, uh, you know, I think you might be ready for the children's show. I was like, really? Awesome. Oh, that's amazing. Because it, it took place right on stage there at Second City. And, you know, all these the people who I'd revered all these years. And, uh, and so she says, yeah, why don't you show up around 1130 Sunday morning? And I was like, okay, isn't the show like at 2.30? And she goes, yeah, yeah, but just, just come at 1130 uh, and uh, we'll talk. And so 11.30 Sunday morning, I'm burr, 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 buzzing the front door. You know, it's, of course, it's all closed up. And uh, after a while, she comes downstairs and uh, she hands me a broom and a dustpan. And I go, what's up? She, she, she said, well, you know, we need you to, you know, clean up the uh, cigarette butts and dirty ashtrays, you know, for the little kitties. Because the night porter, he wouldn't come in until, you know, closer to showtime. <laughs> and so uh, I, I kind of looked at her with a blank stare with a broom and a, you know, uh, dust pan and... Uh, she says, welcome to the theater, kid. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I did, it, did it, uh, the kid show. And then uh, eventually there was a <clears throat> opening in the touring company. And I, uh, I eventually got hired. There's a few stories along that route, too. But uh, and then I, you know, I stayed there for six years. So, uh, you know, it. It's like, what? This isn't, you know, and about halfway through my six years, I thought, well, I guess, I guess I'm an actor. I, I, I really had no, you know, I, I, my goal was only to be in Second City. Thank God. Now, if I had any notion of how hard it was to get in Second City, I would have plotzed and, you know, ran for the hills. But uh, I, I was too clueless to even know that wow um so uh oh somebody uh somebody chimed in on the show and said that we are both beautiful and formidable women <laughs> heidi my good friend heidi master giovanni who you know who wrote for dean and Gl glenita it's lovely thank you heidi thank you Hi, heidi <laughs> uh, um well, I have to. Uh, I'm going to have to now erase the first 15 minutes of the show because you've just ruined everything that I ever tell my students about the drive and the education and everything they have to have to make it in this business. You have to know that you want it, and no, it's it's great. You know, there are a million ways into this business, and everybody has. A different story. And I think you're the first person I've had on who hasn't led with, oh, you know, when I was five years old, I knew that I, you know, wanted to, to do this. So you didn't do any, you, you weren't in the shows in high school. You, wow. That's, that's <laughs> extraordinary. <clears throat> well, it was certainly uh, very, <clears throat> very lucky, uh, you know, really, really incredibly lucky and <clears throat> so i think some talent matter i think some uh, talent maybe falls in there too along with the oh, no. yeah yeah no yeah, yeah but you know and then there's the whole union thing which is like so uh you know they hired me for the touring company and they go well, you have to join uh actors equity i'm like oh 
Um, yeah, sure. Okay. And so that was sort of it. <clears throat> then, uh, you know, after, you know, some folks saw us on stage a few times, you know, me and the rest of the cast that one day we get this call, you know, yeah, they want you to go over to Leo Burnett and <clears throat> do some, you know, some voice demos for, uh, uh, you know, commercial campaign they're, they're working on. And, um, and we walk in and go, okay, whatever. And we groggily go at like nine or 10 in the morning. And uh, they say, yeah, you got to, uh, here, just, you have to join SAG. Uh, it's like, <clears throat> okay, um, okay. Uh, and so there, that was sorted. And then uh, a few weeks later, they, yeah, we like that. We're like running on radio. You have to join AFTRA. And uh, so it was like, Boom, boom, boom. And so now your students or whomever, you know, that that's so important to sort out those union affiliations. And it's really way more, uh, way easier to sort that out in, uh, say, Chicago or Seattle or San Francisco or any number. In like New York and L.A., that's tough. Yeah. Tough, tough, tough. So, um <clears throat> You know, if you have the option of looking at smaller markets, maybe even Atlanta, where there's lots of uh, sag and after work, uh, not so much equity, but, you know, uh, these are nuts and bolts uh, things on your to-do list. Yeah, absolutely. So um, who was there with you at, uh, now you, when did you start at Second City? You started well after my dad's time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I started in, well, I started the workshops in 73 and okay. got in the touring company in 74. Uh, so I guess you could date my professional career from 1974. And let's do the math. I want to say it's 45 years or so or more, 46 years. 46 yeah. years, yeah. Crazy. Wow. What, what in God? Anyway. Uh, Severn Garden uh, was there, right? <laughs> not, not when I was there. Oh no, Severn? No, seventy uh, four? No. Um, you know, I had just the the um, John Belushi and Joe Flaherty and oh, uh, Ryan. Right. No, no, they they had just left. Okay. Uh, uh, John Candy, um, uh, Brian Murray, uh, Harold Ramis, they all just left. So uh, the people I was, I was there in six years, mind you. So there was quite a few, but um, uh, ones you might, uh, you might know, my Shelley Long, um, right. Betty Thomas, uh, Miriam Flynn, Tim Kazarinski, Mary Gross, Danny Breen, Bruce Jarko, um, Jim Belushi. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Sheldon was there, right? Yeah, Sheldon. Was. Okay. Yeah, the patriarchs and matriarch were there. These matriarchs, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. Uh, Joyce Sloan and Bernie Sollins, Fred Gaz, Del Close, Sheldon. It's so funny. So many of these names that I grew up with, some of them I knew, some of them I didn't. Sheldon, obviously. I knew practically grew up on his lap, but Fred, I heard about a lot all the time. I would hear about him, but I didn't, I didn't know him. Um, so, uh, I want to talk a little bit, uh, you know, ask you a little about, bit about, um, y you know, we all, we all know about cheers obviously. And we know when we, when we, uh, from you and from other people who are in shows that we, we know what the gift is of shows like that. What, 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 what is the, what is the curse of a show like that? Do you feel, I mean, uh, and, and not to, not to say, Oh, it was bad, but you know, everything has it. Cause I, you know, cause I can speak from watching my dad, you know, some things like something that's wonderful also has a curse with it. Like never being able to, you know, for, for 10 years, not being able to go anywhere without somebody screaming serpentine and uh, from after, after the in-laws and I, I've hung out with you and, and seen the, um, 
the grace I would call it that you display when you walk into any venue or restaurant or anything and people start screaming, not screaming, but you, you know, you can't walk in anywhere without somebody going, no, you know, and, uh, and I've seen you handle that with tremendous grace, I think, because. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, it's, I found it's uh, way, um, way it diffuses uh, the situation if you just sort of, you know, tip your cap and embrace it for a moment because that's, you know. You're not going to escape it. Yeah, and also, you know, they're going to get bored with you very quickly. So, you know, like it's over in like 30 seconds. Uh, right. And they're back to blah, 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 you know, whatever they're talking about to their friends. Right. Uh, so, you know, you just sort of uh, let it ride. I mean, I it, it is funny because, you know, I usually don't get the big norm thing unless they're expecting me. Gotcha. You know, it takes them a while to sort of work out. Like, oh, what's that? Oh, that guy looks like her. <laughs> and uh, but I, I remember loving uh, being, you know, after all these years in LA, I remember loving being in New York, and especially in the winter, because uh, I could cover up completely and walk around anywhere, you know, uh, in, in Midtown, you know, like crazy, uh, and nobody recognized me at all because I had a big park on a hood, you know, right. uh, a scarf up to here and, and, um, <laughs> so, but, but I would walk into like a bar, of course, uh, in the dead of winter. Um, and, uh, nobody, you know, people, nobody notices anything. And then I would be like, you know, with the hood and the scarf and the jacket would come off and all of a sudden, it was like Richard the Lionhearted in, in Robin Hood. It was like, <gasps> my age. <laughs> yes, I'm your king. <laughs> yes, there we go. Nice. Um, what do you um, what What do you think when you uh, actually? No, I don't want to get into that now. But uh, serious roles. You've had the the opportunity to dip into that from time to time, no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not my uh, it's not my long suit. I have to admit. Do you enjoy it or no? Not as much as getting not laughs. as much as the comp the laughs yeah. the laughs. Um, well, I want to I want to you know we we've got some people watching, so I want to uh, I want to show a couple of quick pictures. Okay. Um, here is where people can uh, compare if they want. Uh, this is okay. you as a woman. Yeah, it's one of my looks, my glammed up look. And then, um, and then I I have a clip of our uh, our romance for people to. <laughs> Take a quick look at if they'd like. So here we go. I had a vision when I was in that food coma. St. Marie Callender came to me and she said, Beanie, open a bed and breakfast in Peculiar. You will find peace in Peculiar. Where the odds are with you. It's pretty special stuff. You know, I, I did this other show with my younger brother, Tony, um, uh, and, and on uh, where we talk about movies. And on Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about um, Light Sleeper, the Paul Schrader movie uh, that Dana Delaney was in. Yeah. And uh, Dana played my wife in, in wow. a show in New York for about about three years. And I... Hang on. Didn't you have a, an awesome wife in... Um... On um, uh, Broadway too, or is it off Broadway? Um, it was off Broadway. In, uh, uh, Lisa Emery in Dinner with Friends. Oh, but then Dana yeah. re Dana replaced Lisa Emery for three months. Oh, 
And so I got to kiss Dana Delaney. Uh, and I have to tell you, late at night sometimes I I play back in my mind kissing her and and kissing you. And and <laughs> it's um I don't know. It's uh it's an interesting comparison. Yeah. Um <laughs> so, so there we are. Our our ladies. Yes. They edited the hell out of that kiss, didn't they? They I don't think it was actually that long. No, I don't think, I think so. They had a couple of cameras on it and they Yeah. They tacked it, they kept tacking it together, but it was it was a pretty special day. Yeah. It's a fun project too. That, that was a lot of fun. That was, yeah. that was that's some pretty silly stuff. Oh, uh, in case people don't know, and I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, in the description to this video later when we're done. That was a show called uh, Verdine and Glenita, where uh, George and I finally, after years of begging, got to play husband and wife. <laughs> um, what what do you do off stage that feeds you? Wow away from this well you know currently i've just been like you know binging uh, uh just msnbc and uh you know just uh being dumbfounded at uh at the political situation going on now what what's happening? Because uh, I don't I I don't follow any of that. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and uh, there's a you know I, uh, sports uh, I like I like yeah. I used to like live music, but you know something happened. Uh, I still like it, but uh, you know it's like uh, it's the, well a you can't go anywhere now. Right. And the, um, you know, I've gotten so old that it's, uh, and plus I can't stand for very long. So I've got to sit someplace. Right. And like, you know, a cool gig, you know, like, you know, you're supposed to stand there. And it's like, and, um, so also, you don't spend a lot of time in the, you don't spend a lot of time in the mosh pit. Well, I, I like to be just behind the pit. Because uh, I can't handle the pit, but I like to be in the community. Okay. Uh, but also the headliner, you know, goes on at 11 or 12 at night. Like, fuck that. You know, like, right. I, you know, they should do geezer gigs where, like, the headliner goes on at 8 and then the supporting acts go on afterward. Geezer gigs. Yeah. Okay. But uh, what else do I do? I don't, eh, you know. Um, I'm a family man, as you know. Uh, of course, my kids are all grown ups now, but um, uh, mm, uh, I don't do too much, you know. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Don't watch too much of the all the awesome TV shows. Uh, once in a while, I'll, I'll, you know, just lock into one. Uh, started watching. I saw the last episode of. Good Lord Bird last night. That was pretty amazing. Oh, okay. I don't know that one. Uh, yeah, Ethan Hawke. Oh, all right. Uh, playing John Brown, the abolitionist. Oh, okay. I'll yeah. check that out. I have a question here from a, a good friend of mine uh, who actually just ran for judge here in New York and won. So that was some good other good news that came out of the, the election we just had. But he's curious as to how the Roland Colombo came about. Just the way they come about. Well, uh, Peter uh, was tight with uh, David Mamet. And um, also, you know, he, he, Peter did uh, Glengarry, uh, the, the national tour of Glengarry. Oh, I never knew he, that. Yeah, he played Shelley, uh, the machine, Levine. And uh, uh, actually saw it. He was amazing. Uh, but he's always amazing. Um, and so uh, I was doing Lake Boat, an early uh, Mammoth piece. Um, and he came uh, to see it. 
and uh, then he uh, offered me this uh, this role. I guess you know his people or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. It was be- I think it was because he he enjoyed Lake Boat. Now um, you have a book out also. Yes, I do. Should we plug that? Sure. I think, I think we should plug that. It's called it's called drinking with George. Get out of town. No, I know, I know. It, it's that was their idea. Um, Who would I, ever think of it, such a thing? There it is. Um, you know, I was thinking more like be the beer. Be but, the beer. Yeah, that was sort of my my idea for a title, but. Um, uh, Simon and Schuster, they think they know what they're doing. Aha. Uh-huh. And boy, do they ever. Holy crap. It's uh, They really, they got it down. Wow. So yeah. are, are you strictly a beer man or are there other uh, things that you enjoy as well in the, in, in the realm of, of liquid refreshment? Yeah. Well, I do. <clears throat> I do love a uh, beer, um, and I do. I like you know shots of whiskey. I like a shot in a beer, you know. Okay, it, it takes the guesswork out of getting lit up. <laughs> uh, some friends of mine uh, and I are starting a spirit company. Yeah. Um, so uh, once we and we're working on our prototype, and uh, I'll have to bring you a, a sample of it when I get back to LA. That'd be cool. Yeah, I love it's, that. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a really nice. Uh, and I actually, um, I actually tried uh, making a boiler maker with it, uh, and it, you know where you drop a, a yeah. shot into, yeah. and it was really good. It went really well in an IPA. It gave it a really oh. nice fresh burst. Yeah. Well, you know, so, uh, I usually don't do that. You know, I, I just have the, you know, shot of whiskey. Well, I've never had a boiler maker before, but I thought I don't think I have either. <laughs> pretty good. It's not bad. It was really good with this because the the flavor of the um, the spirit that we're working on complemented the flavor of the IPA. Um, right. It wasn't fighting it. Uh, yeah. So it was really nice. I um, do love my uh, California IPAs, though. That's a that's a good style, uh, you know. I think um, the IPA. Well, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. It, me too. That's my favorite. I spend a lot. Of, I spend a lot of time with i with IPAs. <laughs> I'll be spending some time with an IPA later this evening, probably. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um. So, um, favorite actor to work with other than me. Wow. Or actors. Like, who have you had just great experiences with? I mean... All the Cheers guys, obviously. Um, oh, I mean, Tim. aside from this. I mean, I know I know that this was the highlight for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that was a fun show. Holy that God. was... that God, we had fun. Yeah. Richard Dresser, um, he's... Uh, it, it was funny. I mean, it was, it do you was, remember the first time in West Virginia when we read that for an audience when we yeah. just went down to do a workshop and we got to parts of that play where we waited, I think, two or three minutes to go on? And your and that monologue, was because your I was monologue, with, your monologue with, with your little boy trying to catch a fly ball, um, that was just the real showstopper for me. It was nuts. That play was so much fun to do. Yeah. It was a crazy time that was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, oddly, um, Shepherdstown, is that where we were? Shepherdstown. Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Yeah. Right near Harper's Ferry, where the ending of uh, The Good Lord Bird uh, started. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I was like, I was there. I was, I was like, there. Yeah. And Tietum is right there, too. Like yeah. the Civil War buffs. All the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of Confederate flags there. Yeah. I just drove a few months ago from Los Angeles to New York, 
Um, and I put a Confederate flag on my car when I left California and kept it there till I hit Eastern Pennsylvania just to keep me safe. <laughs> okay, so Tim Kazerinsky is somebody who I really uh, enjoy working with. Um, we uh, we work together uh, at Second City, and and you know, uh, on and off for forty years. But um, so that's cool. Um, you'd probably know him as Officer Sweet Chuck. Yeah, Police Academy, and yeah, uh, several years on Saturday Night Live as well. So when you when you're working with somebody like that who you've worked with over and over and over again, there's a shorthand. All I have to do is look at Kazarinsky. You know, it's just like, it, you know who was like that? Peter Falk. What, that guy, he was magic. I mean, I did a, he, it was some tribute to Peter, but it was a little bit of a QA. and a And uh, it was remarkable. You know, there's, you know, 500 people in the audience and, they would ask Peter a question and you, they would just start laughing the second he started, you know, the second he took the question on board, he, you know, you could just see the wheels turning and they were howling at what he was going to say before he even said it. Wow. I never saw anything like it. Huh? Anybody else? Like that? Well, that you that you, that you feel that kind of kinship with on stage that you oh. like to toss the ball with. Hmm. Well, I'll, you know, pretty much all my Second City friends, right? Uh, current and you know, in past and present. If you, we we get together for charity gigs a lot, right? And so, I you know, I get to work with uh, some of the uh, guys that are you know, a generation or two younger than me. Um, and that's always fun, you know. Wow. And do you find that that through even with those generational differences, because you come from the same training, that there's still that shorthand there? I very much do, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's, it's, it's almost like being a Marine or something. There's just a, you know, it's... You, you can only sort of get that, um, you know, if you've been through that, right? <laughs> that mill. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine it. It's funny because you know, I, uh, I think my my reaction to to my father being one of the, you know, the the form the uh, formidable folks there. Um, I think uh, my reaction to that was to become very, to go the other way and become very text-based. Yeah. You know? um, and I've always had, uh, I, I've been told when, when I go through improv uh, exercises in rehearsals with directors who want to work in that way, I've been told, hey, you, you know, you're great at this. You have an ability, you know, but I am, I feel terrified of it and bad at it. Um, I suck balls. Uh, <laughs> I, I just really, I'm just not, a, I, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not that quick verbally. And now you can lock into, you know, the setup and everything and, and, you know, well, you had to really, otherwise you would have never been in a show because we, we basically had to, you know, create our own material. Right. So, but, um, I was, a, a reluctant improviser and, um, really hung them up after, uh, after I left second city, I, I really don't improvise much except for, you know, the odd, like I said, the charity gigs or this or that. Now, all of my best friends, including my wife, uh, they love to improvise, and they've improvised several times a week, come hell or high water, whether it's on Zoom or uh, you know in c comedy clubs, etc. Um, but I, I, 
I got lucky with just like insanely good writers, right? On Cheers, and I just well, but you you must not suck balls to you know to quote a great man. Um, if if you if they kept you around and elevated you through the company the way they did, yeah. Well, you know, I did get fired at one point. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. I recommend it, by the way. <laughs> I'll see what it, I can do. Well, it's it's it was very freeing in a way because it really made me commit back to because um, well, I think I mentioned when I was prattling on about you know. Oh, it's in the children's show. Oh, there's an opening in the touring company. Oh, oh, now they want me for the resident company. And I was like, uh, this is easy, you know, kind of, you know. Got you. I see what you mean. And uh, and then by, after a year in the resident company, I got fired. And I'm like, oh, geez, I thought it was over. You know, I was whatever I was, 26 or 27 or something. And uh, it was the, really the first roadblock I'd ever hit. Hmm. Uh, yeah, since coming back from Europe low those many years ago. And uh, so, but they didn't want me to like go away. They um, they wanted me to go back in the touring company, sort of a demotion into the the minor league team, you know. Okay. But, but the good news was they told me uh, that the touring company had plenty of work, and they did. I mean, they had a, you know, yeah, we were quite busy. So, um, so it was it was a good gig nonetheless, even though I was crushed and you know heartbroken. Right. But it made me. Uh, they, you know, gave me the gift of time. Kind of made me. Um, you know, kind of by the time they they did hire me back. Um, right. Uh, like a year later. Okay. But I, in that interim, I kind of matured, you know, and, and uh, kind of developed a, a comic voice, if you will. Interesting. Yeah. So for, for, for my young people out there who want to do what you do, what is, what is your advice to them? Well, besides it's, beer, it's so hokey. What? Besides beer, <laughs> um, no. It's it sounds hokey, but um, honestly, the most <clears throat> cogent, on the money, overall note I ever got was I was uh, up on stage in a in a workshop uh, with Josephine Forsberg. Uh, you know who was. Uh, the teacher and she's sitting in the house and um, she, there's, you know, two or three of us or four of us doing a, uh, an exercise. And uh, she yelled up to me, when you're having fun, we're having fun. And uh, she's right. You know, you can tell when performers are having fun even in a you know dramatic setup and and like even musicians you you can see musicians like having fun you know and it's just uh, it's catchy you know and and uh, so my advice is have fun uh, and I mean in every aspect because it's such a miserable uh, life in in so many ways you know like uh but you, so enjoy the process is uh a corollary by that you know enjoy reading plays enjoy going to workshops enjoy pounding the pavement for an agent or or commercials or this or that enjoy the audition process you know like it you're you're an actor. You're a performer. Your job is to take a piece of material and and knock it out of the park, and that could be in front of uh, 
you know, 40 million people on a sitcom, or it could be, uh, you know, uh, 250 people in a, in a theater, or it could be, uh, you know, a casting director and a, and a producer in a room, you know, two, three people. And, uh, you know, it's an audience. It's you. You just kill it. Knock it out of the park. Right. Um, Have fun. You know, I know you're a, a deeply, deeply philosophical man. <laughs> um, so I want to I want to dive into that for a minute because this is something I talk with about. I talk with my students about this, and I I talk to my guests about it, and different people have different feelings about it, but. Um, Aside from the just the the straight entertainment value of what we do, um, do you do you spend time thinking about the um, you know what we do started around fires and caves, you know, and then the temples of Greece and and um, do you spend time thinking about the 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 role of what we do in in the larger scheme of things in terms of what it does for people aside from just pure entertainment it i figured a long time ago is uh, once again corollary to having fun and what i was just on about uh, is uh I remember uh, commercials, you know, uh, and thinking, oh, I don't want to do a commercial. I don't, oh, that's a sellout or something. I mean, I was young. <laughs> I was dumb. <laughs> but um, I, I rationalized it to myself, and I think I'm right, is that um, I, uh, I make little bits of film that, you know, hopefully make somebody smile or chuckle. And uh, that's what I do. And, you know, it's, um, so it could be, you know, in, in the guise of, you know, selling, you know, furniture in Hawaii or something. Um, right. But, um, do you know the movie um, Sullivan's Travels? Yes. Yeah. So, because I, I think of that often, that even, you know, if you're, you know, that some people might say that, that what some of us do in, in large parts of our careers is, is just fluff or, you know, making people laugh. And that movie has such a beautiful statement about, about that, yeah. about people's need to just laugh. Was it Mickey uh, Mouse or something at the end? Pardon me. Was it Mickey Mouse or something at the end? Yeah, they're yeah. watching. They're watching Mickey Mouse and the the and the wolf and the yeah. They're watching the worst old cartoons. <laughs> and the the prisoners and the poor people watching it and laughing and uh, yeah. what a what a what a brilliant statement that is. But um, you know, even something like Cheers, where it, I mean, I think that was probably a success because people saw themselves um, in in those in those people, and I think there's a lot to be said for that um, in in any of the shows that that we do. When when you say to an an audience, when you say to somebody in an audience, "I see you." Um, it's, it's tremendously validating. Yeah. It's a old dear. You're, you're a little more philosophical than me. <laughs> All right. I should, I should, I should just start drinking. But my friend <laughs> yeah. Carrie, my yeah. old friend Carrie says, having the ability to make people laugh is a great blessing. So you have given us a lot of great blessings then. Good. Um, I would say, uh, I think that's, that covers the questions that I have for you. Okay. Do you have questions for me? Like why the hell do I do this? 
Um, this maybe. darn silly show. Oh, awesome. <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. No, no questions. Uh, um, well, I can't wait to get back to LA and spend some time with you again. Um, and, you know, maybe now that that clip of us being romantic is out yeah. there, you know, it'll give somebody an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or maybe John and Sean can uh, come up with uh, another way to sell peculiar. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny that I, I mentioned to you that Dana is going to be on the other show on Wednesday night. And uh, right after filming that scene with you, I, they had made me shave the backs of my hands for yeah. being to play Aunt Betty. Yeah. But I didn't shave my arms. I just shaved the backs of my hands. <laughs> And a couple of days later, I was at an opening at South Coast Rep with Dana. Mm -hmm. And there's a photograph of the two of us. I have a short sleeve shirt on. <laughs> it looks like I have a sweater on under the short sleeve shirt. Because it just comes to this. <laughs> just this, it's so It was so bizarre looking. Yeah, I had to get shaved uh, about every 10 days on hairspray. Because there was, you know. Your arms, sleeveless fashions, and scooped necks and whatnot. And, oh, know, good my, lord! My whole upper body was shaved. Oh lord! Yeah, poor guy in the hair room had to freaking shave me. Did, was, they, did did he get hazard pay? I really? tipped. <laughs> I tipped him handsomely. Oh, oh, good. Um. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Um, I always love hanging out with you. I just wish we were doing it over a beer. Indeed. But, uh, definitely when I get back to LA. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Good night. <laughs>